Welcome to the October edition of North St. Paul Notes. I'm your host, Paul Anderson. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll be joined by Mayor Mike Keene as he reflects on his years of service to the city of North St. Paul. Stay tuned, North St. Paul Notes is straight ahead. Hello and welcome to the October edition of North St. Paul Notes. We hope this show will keep you up to date on the news and events that are of interest to the residents of North St. Paul. I'm joined now by Mayor Mike Keene to talk about his years of service to the city of North St. Paul. Welcome, Mike, to the program. It's not your first time here, so you're, it's, you're a veteran in more than one way. It, it definitely is not my first time, <laughs> Paul. It's been a lot of years. and. And uh, of course, I'll be stepping down now as the mayor at the end sure. of the year and uh, appreciate the invite. And as we start, I want to also thank you. I think I was mayor about six months and working full time. And, and Mayor Sandberg had always hosted this program. Right. And I asked mm -hmm. you to take over and be the host. And you've done a wonderful job. And I want to oh, thank you thank and hope you, you continue thank to you. do it. It's so. been a pleasure. And yeah. I won't promise that I'm going to continue <laughs> too long. But well, you're doing been, a great job. It's been about eight or nine years now, I think. So. Excellent. Um, as you might have guessed, I'm going to start with a little historical perspective. Sure. Um, this was February 1889. And I should add that I've been reading, as I mentioned to you before, that I've been reading the old North St. Paul Sentinel newspaper. Right. And Sentinel was the first newspaper in North St. Paul. Right. And it was located right about where the flagpole is on Seppla Boulevard and Margaret Street. Right. So uh, it was an old, it was an old building when it was torn down. Right. And so... Uh, when I was a, a boy, it was North St. Paul Cleaners. By it was then. North St. Yeah. Paul Cleaners, yeah. that's right. And Elmer Seppola was the owner of yeah, the Cleaners. That's correct. Yeah. And that, that's how we ended up with the name Seppola Boulevard. Right. But this was from 80, 1889, and it said, this is an article directly uh, mentioned in the Sentinel. Yeah. yeah. A and W Keene of Wabasha have purchased the A N Johnson building on Margaret Street, nearly opposite the Sentinel office, and will open a meat market in the spring. Right now, it said A and W. I wonder if that meant A W or. Do you happen to have any? I, well, I know that in 1887, my family first arrived in North St. Paul, and there was three brothers. It was. Uh, my grandfather August, which could have been the A, his sure. brothers William, and and uh, it'll come to me the other the other. Well, brother. maybe that's the A and W then. It could have August very well and been. William. Sure, sure, August and William, and uh, then the other one, the third brother was Gottlieb, who worked at the Luger Furniture Factory oh, for years. Okay. He was sure. a furniture maker. Well, um, this is the first mention that I could find in the in the Sentinel. Right. Mentioning the Keene family, right. so and they came from Wabasha. That's correct. So that's yeah. it, it's just kind of a. I thought it was an interesting sidelight. That very much uh, so. Yeah, I, my uh, great grandparents' house is uh, five doors down the street on Fourteenth Avenue from where I live. So, so it's still there. Four generations ago, they lived in a neighborhood home. And, okay, yeah. sure. Well, that's that's interesting because yeah. uh, you have a long history in town. <laughs> Our family does. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, a good history. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not always, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we won't mention We that. won't talk about the, the dark side. <laughs> right. Well, after 28 years as a council member and mayor, um, how many years in each position? Uh, about 17 as council and then 11 as mayor. Okay. Uh, after Mayor Sandberg died, we had a special election, and that's when I first got elected mayor then to replace Bill. Okay, sure. Yep. And uh, it's been an um, interesting time. Very much for so. you, and uh, yeah. I think for the for the city too. Right. Well, as I you know leave office and look back, and uh, I mean I couldn't have been a, it couldn't have been a greater honor to me to very sincerely uh, in my life to serve as a North St. Paul Council member and mayor. 
uh, as, as you mentioned, I mean, my family roots are very deep in the town. I'm fourth generation, and I'm not a kid anymore by any means. So, right. mm -hmm. I mean, there's a fifth and sixth generation in the community, and, and uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that your town that you're proud of, and there's a lot of things when I became on the council that we needed to start working on. Sure. So I think we did a good job over the last 28 years trying to advance the town to, to continue to keep it a nice place. Well, you've seen so much in that time. Uh what uh, what stands out in your mind? Well, I mean, think I think first of all, which was you know kind of intentional, is the city infrastructure. I mean, you know, when I, since I've been mayor, I mean, the first think big project with public facilities was the community center, and even though it's no longer run as a community center, it's still a very active place mm -hmm. with the library and now a, a girls volleyball program, which is a very hot commodity mm -hmm. from a from a youth athletic perspective. It's a very much growing sport. And I understand how the high school league's also going to be offering boys volleyball, which should also give their their mm -hmm. business uh, probably another boost over the years. Sure. So they they continue to be the principal lease in that building. But that and, and redoing the McKnight ball field complex, mm -hmm. obviously the new city hall, the public works. I mean a lot of that infrastructure, Casey Lake development and improvements, the park shelters over the years. I mean those physical things that people actually see, you know, gives me great pride and it was not done by the council and myself unintentionally it's trying to give a message that North St. Paul is a city that wants to advance and move forward and I'll tell you with the new Casey Lake with the new uh, uh, shelter and the mm -hmm. and, uh, Janie's playground and the new uh, Jerry Bell ball field that the twins helped us uh, it's pretty well used. yeah I mean it's a very popular place mm -hmm. and people really love going there and kids love it especially with the playground and yeah. so I mean those things are done consciously to try to build up and send a message particularly to to uh, developers who are looking around that North right. St. Paul is a good place to to build your and grow your business right well, um, I know that when you came into office, economic development was a right. was a favorite topic for right. you. Right. And uh, you succeeded in getting a lot of things going. Can you talk about that a little sure. bit? Sure. Um, there goes the rest of the show. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of, uh, of really interest. I mean, for me, always, since I first ran for council, my two principal goals were quality and good housing in, 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 in decent neighborhoods where people take care of their property and respect their neighbors. And then, of course, to grow the tax base and bring more jobs and business and, and opportunities to North St. Paul. When I became mayor 11 years ago, one of the first things that I did is created a task force of our business community, big businesses, small businesses, uh, people who just had an interest in, in wanting to advance the city. To, uh, to work on that and, and after a couple years of studies and working with the task force we created our first economic development authority or agency I think is a quick name and it's been around now for about 11 years Robert Dew who owns the Kendall's Corner building has been the chair for the last several years originally it was Jerry Bell who mm -hmm. was a longtime resident former president of the Minnesota Twins and and they've helped really a lot reaching out because I tried to create the economic development when I selected people to serve on it who are, we have local business representation but the vast majority are people who are tied to business but necessarily uh, not a business in North St. Paul. Like mm -hmm. Robert Dew is the president of LS Black which is a big developer of commercial property and we have uh, uh, Rich McNamara, who used to be the system manager in Oakdale, who's now with mm. People's Bank, and he works on financing and of uh, projects and developments, and people like that who kind of are aware of the bigger world outside of North St. Paul right. of how you make development happen, what it takes to attract business, and so we, we worked hard on that to get it going. And for the first few years, it was frustrating because mm -hmm. the economy was bad. We were in that recession. It was a bad time. Your retirement was uh, well. The state was going downhill, and everybody was thing. nervous, but things. <laughs> have improved obviously and and so now we're seeing a lot of interest because we are in a really good location in North St. Paul. Mm -hmm. We have just you know we're inside that beltway of the 494 694 beltway and but the problem is with North St. Paul is redevelopment. Redevelopment is painfully slow land acquisition we have people sometimes critical why is the city buying this property or that well we're trying to create an opportunity for a developer because mm -hmm. the more you can assemble land the easier it is to attract a developer so right now we have going uh, they're going to be a groundbreaking probably by this time the show airs uh, probably uh, around beginning of October a groundbreaking ceremony with uh, uh, development up uh, in the where the old school bus garage used mm -hmm. to be that we call Commerce Park that's going to be called Sweet Living 
It's 32 uh, beds that are assisted living, advanced assist assisted living, mm -hmm. and then memory care. Again, there continues to be a big need for that. Mm -hmm. And they're a, a, a pretty much a metro-wide developer. They're completing a similar development in Little Canada this year. They opened one last year in Vadness. So they're around and they have a, a good business plan. They want a smaller scale development and then administratively they administer things from a central office like their personnel and things mm -hmm. like that. So that's worked out and that's on the go. The permits have been taken out. That's ready to break Good. ground. Uh, we're seeing a real strong interest now in the anchor block that has been sold to a company called Inland Development. And they are working now with M&I homes on the south of the Gateway Trail right. for about 100 townhomes that will go on there built by a company called M&I, which is a national housing company, but it's tied to the old Hans Hagen homes that used to build oh, sure. in the Twin mm -hmm. City area. And those are family townhomes that will go into that area. And then north of the trail on the old Anchor Block site, there's an interest for uh, a couple apartment buildings and then a storage locker, which sounds, you know, you think of these big sprawled out garages. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays those have changed. They build a fairly large building, but they go up. It'll be about four stories. And the back of that property, that will likely go in there. And the, the reason why that's ideal for that development, it'll kind of screen the Shifsky's operations with their piles of, of debris and sand and dirt that mm -hmm. they have that's necessary for their uh, business to kind of be screened from that with uh, where right. they, and there's, there's a proposal by a couple of different developers that want to put apartments in there. It'll probably be like two 100 unit apartment buildings that will mm -hmm. go on that area. We. The developer tried to get retail in there, but the interest is more on the target side of 36, so sure. uh, retail just didn't seem to catch on there. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it, it brings over 300 more housing units. It's not far from downtown. It can be a more stimulus, for, again, for more people and more traffic into the downtown. Mm -hmm. And then moving into the downtown, we are working with some potential local uh, develop, uh, business people to develop the old City Hall site, which has mm -hmm. been there for 11 years vacant. We're finally seeing a strong interest in that. There's some interest in the old medical site as well. Mm -hmm. And there's huge interest right now in the land right across from our city, new city hall and fire station. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the city recently purchased one of those two dental offices and we, we own that unimproved parking lot that's there and mm -hmm. there's just one other dental office and we continue to discuss the uh, purchase of that sure. which will open up that parcel of land for also hopefully some type of a development that probably will be more two stories of apartments and then the main level hopefully some retail that will come in and, mm -hmm. and uh, but we'll have to see what type of proposals are out there but we're seeing a great interest in sure. in developing and wanting to move into North St. Paul. And some of those properties have been kind of a sore point for exactly. a lot of citizens Ex who are wondering what's going on. Exactly. Why, why can't we do something Exactly. Like and yeah. it takes a lot of time and, and a lot of hoops and, uh, and, and frankly to locate and contact the correct people that have an interest. They don't That's just right. knock on your door. You have to kind of go out and find them almost mm -hmm. and say, we have this parcel that, you know, do you have an interest in? So uh, actually uh, one of the interested parties in the apartments that could go on the Anchor Block site uh, could potentially be the company that actually built the Polar Ridge development a couple mm -hmm. years ago, sure. which is a St. Cloud development uh, corporation okay. that's based up there. So they're one of the parties that have been negotiating with the inland development company that owns the land to possibly build there because they like doing business with us mm -hmm. when they worked on Polar Ridge. So some of it is also when you have some positive experiences and have some development, you know, they continue to come back. And then we also have a, continue to have a strong interest from, from uh, Reflex Medical owner uh, Kevin um, Fuller, who is interested sure. in possibly uh, expanding in his building again or doing some other type of building someplace else mm -hmm. in North St. Paul as well. So we continue to see a strong interest in development. As I'm throwing these out here, people sure. might say a year from now, well, the mayor said this, it hasn't happened. Right. Well, these look more positive, but a lot of development proposals that you first start initially hearing about just never come about, but we think these are very positive ones that mm -hmm. have advanced several steps down the road towards actually happening. Sure. I remember we had Kevin on the program. Yeah, great the first, guy. First year he came to town, yeah. and uh, it's kind of an endorsement of the whole program when, yes. when somebody like that 
right. wants to expand in, right. the, in the city. So. Right. And like I said, redevelopment's a slow process. I mean, there's other businesses and buildings in our town that's mm -hmm. in the main downtown area that probably could use some redevelopment sure. work on them. And we continue to, through our EDA, we offer a facade improvement program that rebates 20% uh, of the facade program back or up to 15000 of a total project. So the city EDA would reimburse $3,000 for a business to put a new facade work on their building. Mm -hmm. We've had several do that. Uh, part of my building down, uh, down uh, across from Lily News in that right. area put up mm -hmm. new neck lighting, gooseneck lighting, right. and new new uh, awnings and stuff. And and Love Chocolate that took advantage of that and did That's some right. facade work on. Mm -hmm. And there's several others that have done that or are interested. And those small things are really important too. We're putting those parking signs up, what we call wayfinding, mm -hmm. so that people know where public parking is located or this and that. We there's several steps in that process yet we continue to to work on. We hope to get a kiosk along the. Gateway Trail eventually. Uh, over the Margaret Street Bridge, we want to get some kind of a engraved piece of, of, uh, of grill work that says North St. Paul when you go uh, under the Margaret Street Bridge mm -hmm. and things like that. Those little things are important too, right. to, to make your town attractive. But we hope that all this housing and all this stimulus will continue to, right. to, to improve our downtown area because we want that to continue to be the strong, vital kind of mm -hmm. community gathering area. In the community, and, and we want you know to, to the businesses there to both retain themselves to grow and also attract new businesses sure. in the downtown. I suspect it also uh, makes the economic development people the, uh, more enthusiastic when they can point to things well, that have been accomplished. Our meetings uh, right now are just uh, you can't hardly wait for them because there's always <laughs> something new happening and breaking when we sit down and discuss and we've had some developers come in and talk to us about their ideas and go over some of the things. The council's also had a, a few workshop presentations, mm -hmm. particularly this M&I uh, development that would build the the townhomes on the south part of the Anchor Block site, uh, they have some really exciting plans with yeah. with them. And we're talking very nice townhomes of 1,600 to 2,400 square feet. I think wow. they have four different model plans that you can choose from, and then mm -hmm. they custom it as for you as well. And um, it's it's pretty neat. And they'll range from about 250 up to about 325,000. So we're talking uh, very nice homes. And why all this development is important, just looking at that Anchor Block site with the apartments that I mentioned and this M&I townhome development and possibly this storage uh, building and maybe one other commercial, there might be a spot in there for one other commercial, is that probably has a total value of 60 to $70 million. Mm -hmm. And the, when you add up all the property value in North St. Paul, this year the information we got from the county, the value if you bought every piece of privately held property in North St. Paul would cost you about $900 million. Mm. So when you add 70 million to that, I mean, you're talking seven, you know, seven, eight percent of your right. uh, increase in your property value of tax paying property, which helps us right. continue to run good city services. And which be is, benefits every resident. Everybody right? benefits from our efforts on that. Right. Yeah. And I hope to continue, frankly, to be involved in that in the future. Good. I told the uh, the EDA our last meeting, I said, well, I'm going to continue to come even even when I'm not mayor, even if you don't want me to. And the chairman, Robert Dew, says, yeah, well, let's just sit under the table for a bit, you know. So <laughs> so we had some good laughs over that. But I think we've de developed a really good gel of a good group, and they sure. all are really interested in wanting to improve North St. Paul. So right. our meetings are very, very valuable and, and worthwhile exchange of mm -hmm. information. And Paul Emmerman, our, our economic development director, does a great job, and, and along with our city manager, Craig Waldron, who also did community development in his early years for oh, the city of okay. Roseville. And sure. then, of course, as manager in Oakdale, worked on a lot of projects over there. Right. So he, he knows how to help carry that forward, I too. Bet. So we have a good staff support as well. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, another project that you were enthusiastic about is the student built homes yes maybe you can talk about that a little bit one of my prides and joys as being mayor the first year i was mayor and our our uh, fire chief scott dudick who also has code enforcement and works with the city hra on housing issues mm -hmm. uh, was on still on the north st paul maplewood oakdale school board right. and he had heard heard from the uh, uh, school district 916, which is a collaborative kind of school district, about the student-built housing program. And they have built several homes. But the kids, and it represents the district from you know, Stillwater, Montemedi, South Washington County, North St. Paul, White Bear, quite a big area. Well, the kids were having to drive to where new homes were being built, like Lakeville, for their 90-minute mm -hmm. class. 
and stuff, and they were looking to bring that closer in. <clears throat> and we were just starting to get into kind of doing, you know, where we had really dilapidated housing, trying to acquire some of those properties and improve the neighborhoods. And first one was on 14th and, and Helen Street. And the city had purchased the home. We had gone in on a police call, and it was just a bad condition home, and there were children living there, and it led one thing led to another, and we ended up acquiring the property. And uh, so it became our first student-built house. That was the first one. Mm -hmm. And this year now we're building the 10th one, which is on the corner of Skillman and First Street, right across from the Northwood Water Tower. Mm -hmm. There was one built sure. there last year. Now this one is the second one. They already have the basement put in, and they're starting to you know, cap it and mm -hmm. move forward. But these are mostly juniors in high school. Right. And for a while, they only could, when the recession was, they were down to two classes and things were looking dire. And we had to actually supplement the instructor's salary for a couple of years from our HRA funds. Well, all of a sudden now, things are going good. Kids are looking at the construction trade again. This year, they have three classes, each filled with 15 students that show up on the site for 90 minutes a day. Plus, they have a waiting list of eight kids who want to get into the program mm -hmm. still. The instructor, we're no longer helping to subsidize his salary. It's all being paid for by 916 School District, and things are going just fantastically. Right. And uh, uh, each one of them, the last one that's uh, next to the one that's being built this year, uh, sold at its appraised value of 322000 wow. It's a beautiful home with a lot of potential even in the basement because it's a rambler. It has a really large basement. With, when they put in some egress windows so they can be adding bedrooms down mm -hmm. there. It's a family with four children. They're all going to be going to schools in the district. So it's just been a win-win for the community. It's had where They've been built, these homes, especially in the older neighborhoods. It's led to other neighbors making improvements around the neighborhood because they see this nice new home on their block. So it's had a huge impact on us. And mm -hmm. again, I couldn't be more proud of it. And I'm glad Scott Dudek had the idea when he was on the school board, hey, this right. is something maybe we should try to entice sure. this program into mm -hmm. our city. and Let's see if we can find a lot for him. So right. now every year we're scrambling for another lot right. to find for this program to continue. And, and we're not letting them get out of town. I tell, <laughs> tell people that. For sure. <laughs> well, uh, I was kind of joking and before the program, I was thinking to myself, well, I'm looking forward to this program because I won't have to say much. And, and that <laughs> and seems you're right. To be, <laughs> that seems to be the you way You know me going. well, Paul. <laughs> well, when you talk about our community, I get pretty enthused. You know, sure. It's a great place. You, you sure do. Yeah. Well, that's what it takes, and that's yeah. really important, yeah. I think. Yeah. You had mentioned something uh, about projects and change and and uh, you, you were talking about a quote that you had. Oh, yeah. Um, in fact, wanna, I'll, I'll dig it out of my pocket okay. if you don't mind. Sure. You know, I think, you know, and I don't, I don't think it's atypical of communities, particularly older communities, because a lot of our development is redevelopment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we hear, well, why is the city doing this? Or why is the city buying this property? Or why is this happening? I don't mm -hmm. want anything to change, you know. Right. And what we just need is a coffee shop and a restaurant. Well, a lot of these steps we're doing, like bringing in more housing, is to try to hit those goals. Because business people, if you don't have the street traffic and enough people around who want a coffee shop, why would a business person financially take the risk to do it? So I came upon this quote, and you know, now that my tenure as uh, mayor is going to be coming to an end, you know, uh, I've always tried to be very nonpartisan uh, as mayor because our mm -hmm. positions aren't. But I've always been a, a very progressive Democrat personally, and I mean, my heroes are people like Franklin Roosevelt and right. you know, JFK and. And uh, actually, uh, particularly uh, uh, Jimmy Carter with all he's done with the Habitat for Humanity right. programs, but also uh, recently Barack Obama. And, and I came upon this quote, and I, I hope our residents can understand this, and I just wanted to read this, that change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we need. And and I think that, that people need to understand that, you know, mm -hmm. that... Uh, you know, in our EDA, when we first started out, you know, we said, our town is going to change. It, there's no doubt about it. But let's be proactive in making the cha change be things that are good for the community. Because we want to have what we consider to be good change, not, not undesirable change. Mm -hmm. And I really, as I leave office, wish that people would heed that and understand that, that change is inevitable and let let the government, working with the business community, working with outside developers, develop good things for our community. Development is good for the community, but we want it to be good development. Mm -hmm. And I think it, that takes an active role. I know we have some people, including, you know, uh, uh, even I'm sure some that are running for city council this year, that don't think government should play a role in economic development, but that free enterprise should just happen. Well, 
And I think we've seen that over the years. Now we're playing catch up. We should have probably been proactive for the last, right. you know, before I started pushing it, probably for the last 20 years. And, you know, but, but, but the previous generation didn't have to be proactive. Things just happened in That's town. Right. It was a great mm -hmm. place. But when the malls happened and other things happened and mm -hmm. our downtown started losing its pizzazz and its attractiveness, particularly for business, it, it became a real struggle. So we're trying to get beyond that. And it's going to require government involvement. It's going to require change. And sure. I thank President, former President Obama for hitting that timely quote in my mailbox the other day. So. Right. <laughs> Came in handy for yes, you. Yes, very much so. so. Well, um, you had mentioned that you could, you would like to see yourself involved, still involved with yeah. economic development. Anything yeah. else that you have you, in mind? You know, one of the things I'd like to do, and, and, and we uh, only have a couple of minutes. Yeah, so. one of the things I'd like to do, and it won't be long, but that I've talked about already, and I never got a movie this fall. And partly one of the reasons I'm stepping aside is, you know, uh, my mom is getting quite elderly, and sure. I'm her caregiver, and, and uh, it just takes more time to spend to be with her and right. care for her and stuff. So I haven't had time even in the last several months to get as continue to be as involved as I, I would like to be. But one of the things I'd like to work on in the future, like you were so involved in the Nurse St. Paul Historical Society, I'd like to create kind of an arts and his, arts and culture society that would be similar, but it would promote arts, community projects, you know, things that could be as simple as working to pull together a farmer's market concept, which I know Susanna from Love Ice Cream, she's very interested in being involved in this in one mm -hmm. of the things. Downtown art projects or artworks, murals, uh, musical concerts maybe hosted by the churches in town, ethnic festivals that feature the old ethnic uh, uh, groups in town, but also the newer uh, ethnic uh, groups, because we have a lot of new citizens. We have a, our population is about 25 percent uh, non-white in our St. Mm -hmm. Paul. Now we want to integrate. We want to sure. understand Hmong culture, Hispanic culture, African American culture right. uh, that are more and more coming into our community, and to try to develop some of those things. To all that would be towards the good of trying to build a united community that all these uh, new groups we become melted together and become one yet we maintain our cultural heritage sure. so I'd like to try to do that and help them create a 5013 C uh, charitable organization mm -hmm. and and go out and try to to promote and do a little fundraising and try to get some things going where they can and it'll probably be baby steps at first sure. and I, I'm willing to kind of help organize it and host it for you know a few meetings but we do want it to be kind of operated independently of the city uh, you know, just like the historical society, sure. more or less, has, has been. Well, I suspect that uh, we haven't heard the last of you. So. I hope not. <laughs> uh, I, I can see you coming back on the program, uh, just talking about some of those things that you mm. were interested in. Yeah. So uh, I we, would, I would love to love to do that at any time. I again, I have no intention of moving. I'm a lifer here in North St. Paul. I love it here. I couldn't imagine living anywhere else, and I'll be around. It's just that right now, I need. Uh, to kind of take a, a real act, extremely active break and you know being mayor is a lot of work and sure, assume, yeah. assuming because he's the only one on the ballot council member for a long will probably be elected our next mayor unless there's a huge writing campaign he or is. something which i hope I not think terry he, will be great he has a good chance he will yeah he, yeah and he will be great and uh, i hope to kind of continue to interact with him sure. and maybe in the future i'll have more time to continue to be more involved again in the city at a, at a later date well uh, Mayor Keene, we appreciate all that you've done for the city, and Thank you. we appreciate your coming on the program today. So Always my pleasure, Paul, and you've been a, a great host and a great friend all the Thank last you. several years. So, Thank you. Uh, I, I am uh, truly honored to have been the mayor of North St. Paul oh, and great. to have known no one you. Thank you. Thanks. We've been talking to Mayor Mike Keene, and uh, we are out of time on this program. So join us again next month when we'll bring you more news about North St. Paul. I'm Paul Anderson speaking for everyone at the City of North St. Paul. Thank you for watching.